Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. And uh, first of all, I just want to say it's great to be back on the set. Um, I haven't done one of these in almost two months. Uh, I haven't actually done this with the new camera and the green screen ever. So this is the first time with the green screen and the camera that I can remember uh, because I got the camera and then uh, right after that, I started going out to wineries. <laughs> and then the next uh, couple episodes that I did at the house, I had the, the Christmas tree in the background. So I had Thanksgiving wine and I had, uh, well, no, I think the Thanksgiving wine was still the old camera. But anyway, I haven't done it with the green screen. So I'm about to see how that all works. Hopefully um, by, at this point I will, will have known uh, into the video. But uh, first of all, let's do a little housekeeping. Um, I just want to thank everybody at the, all those Texas wineries that I went to back in December. So we'll start in order of, of, of how I visited. Uh, Becker, um, Messina Hoff, uh, Perton Alice, William Chris, and Dukeman. So I really thank all of you uh, from all those wineries for allowing me to spend, on, honestly folks, it's two hours that I'm usually at these wineries. So it's two hours out of their day that they're, they're spending with me. Now luckily I am showing up on you know, a, a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Monday or whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm showing up on days of the week that um, the wineries are not too busy, especially in December. So it, it makes it a little bit easier for them to give me that time. That's why I don't show up on a Saturday or a Sunday because that's their busiest times. I mean, I, I get it. I'm in, I'm in the service industry. You know, if you, if you want to take two hours of my time, don't show up on a Saturday night. <laughs> show, up, uh, show up Tuesday afternoon, you know, where I have some time to spend with you. So um, I just, again, I just want to thank all of them for spending all that time. Um, then, of course, uh, I did those, you know, in the interim, you know, I had done those... Uh, uh, specials Christmas and New Year's Eve. So I want to thank um, Biltmore for sending me wines for that. And then um, let's see. After that, I just recently came back from uh, uh, you know in real time. I just recently came back from Houston. So again, wonderful time with. Uh, and you're about to see those videos soon. Um, the Consortium for Brunello di Montecino. Brunello di Montecino. Sorry, I, I think that's how you told me to pronounce it. Um, but not just that, the consortium, but everybody at Connected Table that helped me out with that. Um, and Kevin Zraeli, uh, again, pre-thanks since the video is not up yet, but thanks for spending some time with me. Um, it was awesome to, to interview you. Um, you know, one of the, one of the icons of, of, of wine and wine writing and, and all that. So uh, uh, spend time with him. And then, um, and then, of course, I can't on the way back, Messina Hoff. So I got another Messina Hoff video, and this time I'm with... Paul and Paul, so father and son, uh, Bonarigo, uh, out in Bryan, Texas. So I went to go see um, the where it all started. So that was awesome. So look for those two videos coming up. So you got Kevin's Israeli, which will be next week, and then you've got um, the Messina Hoff video, which will be the following week. So look for those. So a little housekeeping. So now, what are we doing today? Well, uh, I actually planned a little farther in advance than than like the week of. Uh, so I've got a Valentine's Day um, episode. Uh, so I bought three wines today uh, over at Central Market, HB Central Market. So the goal of this episode is that you're, I'm going to buy three wines that should have enough distribution in the United States that you should be able to buy them. Now, am I going to find these at the HEB literally a mile or two down the road? No, I'm not going to find all three of them. I surely will not find the, the sparkling wine there. Um, I might find the red wine. Not sure about the white wine. Not positive if I would have found that particular wine, but I would have probably found the one uh, as far as quality level or, or ranking below it. I would have found that one um, for sure because that one's the most one of the most widely distributed Chardonnays out there in the United States. Uh, probably the world. Um, yeah, the, oh, no. They, they make a lot. So... Um, 
I wanted to get something so that this, if, if you were, let's say, not going out to a restaurant, which nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah, that's, that's my main industry, obviously. Um, when obviously, well, man, I don't know if a lot of people realize I do work in a restaurant. Now, I don't say where I work, and that's on purpose because I don't want this to be, want me to be like a spokesperson for my company and, and vice versa or whatever. So, anyway, um, you know, restaurant, that's one of the busiest nights and days, actually. Uh, it's surprising, like, uh, how, how much business you have during the day, too, um, in, in, restaurant, in restaurant industry. So it's one of the busiest all-day things happening, uh, right, right there with Mother's Day. So um, busy, busy day. So let's say, let's say you don't want to go out to a restaurant. Let's say you want to spend the evening at home with uh, your significant other, uh, or maybe you're going to have some friends over and do a Valentine's Day dinner. So you want to have some wines. And what I did was I, the goal was the, the, the sparkling wine was the sparkling wine. Okay, so I want to start off with that, uh, and then the other two wines were more for as as wide reaching as possible, and 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 to be able to fit the occasion as best as possible. So I had to figure out what I wanted to do with those. Um, but anyway, so say you're at home, or you're going to have dinner at home, and this is what you're looking for. So that's what the purpose of today's show is. Now that I've gone almost halfway into what the first segment would have been, let's get going. All right, so we're starting off with the Mum Mum Napa Brut Rosé. So this is the Mum Company. Uh, they are the the company that you know of out of Champagne. But they uh, in 1979 they came over here. Not they. Um, the uh, what was his name? I just Guy Devoe. Uh, came over here from Mum, G.H. Mum, in Cham- Champagne, Champagne, and uh, to look for a place to uh, create a champagne house in the United States. So we traveled around, picked the Napa Valley area uh, in uh, 1979, and decided this would be a great place to do it. So they, so this is um, same people. It's just that this is a sparkling wine and you'll if you see on here uh there's nothing even though they are owned by the champagne house okay uh there is nothing on here that says champagne and that is because of the laws now there are some people that are grandfathered in california that were using champagne and they wanted to that fought the government and fought the fought the european union and all that to say hey we, we we should be able to still use the name and they still use it if i as far as i can remember they're still allowed to but for the most part Anything outside of Champagne, um, or at least as far as the United States, anything in the United States is just called a sparkling wine. It does say what type of sparkling wine it is on the label, on the front label. So method traditional, so the traditional method, so that you know it's fermented. The second fermentation happens in the bottle. So why did I pick? Oh, bought this again at Central Market, uh, non-vintage by the way, for eighteen seventy-three. Now, why did I go with this? particular one. Well, Mum is a very well-known name. Uh, everyone kind of knows it. Um, I went with a rosé. I had a couple choices of rosé, so there was, there was two or three at Central Market that I could choose from. I decided to go with the most popular, or not most popular, the most well-known, at least to me, name-wise. And uh, so that should also mean pretty decent quality. And I wanted a rosé. Now, uh, under these lights, it may look a little orange. It, kind of, it looks a little orange only because I have a red, this red tablecloth, but uh, it's got a nice pink salmon, really like very, very salmony color. I went with pink because thanks, no, not Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, roses, red, you know, all that kind of stuff, pink. So I thought it'd be a really fitting um, type of sparkling wine to go with. Besides, I like rose sparkling wines. I like rose champagnes. Um, I just, I, I, I like the, I, I like how they taste. I like the, I like the aromas you get out of them. So you know, some of this was my own personal preference. So, let's check it out. Yes, again, we all know when I'm evaluating the wine, I'll put it in this class. But uh, if I'm drinking it, it'll be in the, the flute. So I get a little bit of the bakery pastry type of uh, aroma. Now, one thing I did learn from Kevin Zraeli, which you'll see me do in that video with him, was this. I want to make sure that the microphone isn't. Sorry about the Dukeman 
audio though. And I don't know what, what the problem was with that, um, but uh, it was weird. I think, I think there was, the connections weren't completely tight on the, uh, on the recorder I use, so it was making all that noise. Plus, I don't know if, if somehow it was, rub, the microphone was rubbing up against something. I noticed that if I was trying to micro experiment, experiment with the microphone inside the shirt, yeah, that didn't work so well. So sorry about all those videos that the microphone was under the shirt or inside the shirt and you hear those. Yeah, not so much. Oh, so anyway, yeah, so this thing, this is to enhance the aromas of the wine. I know, I, I guess it works. Now I did chill, I did chill the champagne. So it's taking a while for me to get those aromas. I can get a little bit of strawberry, finally. I first got the bakery stuff, and then I started getting a little strawberry out of it. And mostly that's all I'm going to get off the... I mean, maybe a little floral, but it's mostly strawberry, okay? Let's check it out. Great acid on this. Really, really good acidity on it. Um, I still get the strawberry and, and more of the red fruit, but more like the berries type of stuff. You know, maybe even a little bit of raspberry, strawberry, um, that kind of fruit. Great acidity. I mean, really, really acidic. Did I mention it was acidic? <clears throat> really enjoying that. Mouth is just watering. This, is, this would be great. Now, as many people know, I love starting with bubbles for with, with any, any type of meal. So this is also, what, what, what would I be having? Now, besides this is just a great way to get the palate going. Sparkling wines is a great way to get things moving in the, in, in the palate. Um, you, you might be starting off with some cheeses, or you might be starting off with a salad, okay? Um, people who know me really well, you know, I, I love, I love having a sparkling wine and a spinach salad, and having some some fruit in it. Um, the blue cheese crumbles, the vinaigrette dressing, and any type of vinaigrette. I mean, there's just regular balsamic. Then you got all those flavored vinaigrettes, and this is where I really get that connection a lot because of the the, the complementary flavors. With you get the berries, um, and then you get the acid, and that pairs really well with the acidity of vinaigrette. And then if you put berries or even like you get like use of pecans in there, there's a bit of sweetness. And I'm not huge on like pecans and all that, but like in a salad, pecans are kind of cool. Okay. Um, and one of those rare times that I don't mind mixing nuts and food. Okay. Usually I just like eating nuts by themselves, but um, you know, th that little bit of sweetness to it and it just really pairs well with it. And then there's the texture. Okay. The, the salad, the, the, the salad itself, the, the lettuce that you're using, and just the texture, and all, all the textures inside there going with the sparkling wine just gives it like this pop, this excitement to it. Hmm. And I know a lot of it in my head is that connection with salad and sparkling wine, but I can really feel like I'm getting a lot of those red fruits, um, a little bit of the pastry, um, really no, no floor. I don't get really any floral on the palate. Um, no earth whatsoever. Um, it will, a minerality in a sense that, you know, there's, there's a, a steeliness to it, but not minerality as far as earthiness. Okay. Um, you know, really clean. It's really nice. You know, 18 bucks, you know, you're, you're going to splurge a little, not splurge really, but you know, you're not, you're not buying the $9 sparkling wine. Okay. Um, you know, you're, you're going for something that's pretty decent and I, I think it's really good. I highly recommend it. Um, as a member, I 
have already think mentioned somewhere along the line in, in a prior episode, I may not have, um, no longer going to score wines. Um, I'm just going to tell you if I like it or not, if I recommend it, maybe I'll say highly recommend, but um, as I mentioned in, in, in an upcoming, actually this, in two weeks with Messina Hoff, hey, Siskel and Ebert, they made plenty of money, and I'm not talking about how much money I'm going to make, but they were successful in just saying it was thumbs up or thumbs down. You just had to listen to the commentary. Even if they gave it a thumbs down, maybe they found something redeeming to the, in the movie. Um, so absolutely, I mean, totally, totally you go with this. Uh, so a great way to start something off, like I said, getting a salad, getting a cheese tray, or just starting off a little celebration, a little toast to get the juices flowing, okay? So uh, let's move on to wine number two. All right, so now let's move on to wine number two. Now this wine, uh, I, I totally went brand. I mean, I actually, this was the first, this was actually the only brand that came to mind when I started thinking about the wines I wanted to do. I wanted to do Kendall Jackson. Now, uh, people who watch the show know that this is actually unusual. I have an all California show. Um, and then I'm going necessarily with uh, a, a very, very like mass market uh, known or well-known brand. Um, not that I don't have well-known brands on the show, but I tend to, I tend to get stuff that is not as, doesn't have as much distribution. And, you know, Kendall Jackson and, and has been around for a very long time. Uh, this is something that, uh, oh, by the way, wh which one did I get? Uh, so I got the 2010 Kendall Jackson Grand Reserve Chardonnay. Okay. Uh, now this was bought at um, World, I'm sorry, Central Market for $13.88. So let's kind of talk about Kendall Jackson real quick. Um, oh, real quick, back to the other wine. This is uh, the uh, rosé is Chardonnay and Pinot Noir as far as the grapes in here. Um, two of the three champagne grapes. So I just wanted to mention that. I forgot to mention that. And I forgot to mention that, but that's okay. We won't deal with it. It was going to be an aside. Has to do with this and and winemaking, but it's not a big deal. All right, so let's let's talk let's talk uh, Kendall Jackson real quick. So Kendall Jackson is an icon, an absolute icon of American wine. Um, the the gentleman who started Jess Jackson, um, you know, started this in the '70s. I don't remember exactly when they they first bought their first plot of land to grow grapes. He was originally a grape grower, a farmer, okay? And he made some wine with his grapes and some people, or the, the grapes, the wines being made from his grapes were becoming pretty well known that they, he made some pretty good wine from the grapes. Not he, but people were. So they kind of decided to, to get involved in it. So they've been around for a while. And I do have to say that I had just listened to, about a month ago, a podcast from the Guild of Sommiers. And uh, uh, the winemaker for Kendall Jackson was on their show. So I thought it was really interesting, and I actually kind of want to maybe get him uh, on the show at some point. But um, really interesting story. So how did I know that light was going to turn off? These lights are not lasting. These batteries are not lasting uh, at all anymore. So um, we're going to, just like you'll see in a couple weeks, we're going to change the battery. started noticing that the uh, I was able to see the camera a little bit better which I thought was unusual so um, so yes yeah, so Jess Jackson started this winery in the 70s and then he uh, like I said he was growing grapes they decided to make a wine out of it or they decided to make a winery um, and you know this is you know one of those one of those wines is just iconic and I went with the Grand Reserve because that's the not their top level, but that's their next level up from the Vintners Reserve. So I kind of want to talk about the um, uh, where they get or, or talk about how they source it. So they're sourced exclusively from the Jackson Estates grown vineyards in Santa Barbara and Monterey counties. Uh, this release, no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, from the top 6%, okay, of all Kendall Jackson lots. 70% 70, 70 of the wine is from the same vineyard blocks year to year, ensuring greater consistency and enhanced complexity with each vintage. 
Uh, they're they're um, aged on leaves, so Sir Lee aged. Uh, Sir twice monthly to integrate fruit and oak uh, to promote a creamy mouthfeel. Um, let's see. Now, since 2011, all of our vineyards have been third-party certified as sustainable. And then uh, do, 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 there's a few things here. Old Vine Santa Maria Beach uh, Benchland Vineyards in Santa Barbara County add structure and riches to the wine. Monterey County's Hillside Fruit delivers citrus and floral notes. And then a mixture of ancient clone four Dijon and rude clones impart a range of complex blah, blah, blah. Okay. So the point is that this is, this is you know, vintners deserve nothing wrong with it, but this is the next level up. Okay. Being Valentine's Day, I thought maybe we go a little bit special. So why did I pick Chardonnay? Well, I could have picked a lot of white wines, but I think Chardonnay is one of those wines that just pairs so well with a lot of a lot of food. And this this can go with almost anything you're gonna have that isn't a steak, okay? That isn't something that you definitely want a red wine with. Um, and, and and I know that I don't have a lot of Chardonnays in the show, and I thought, well, this is Valentine's Day. Chardonnay is gonna be probably the number one pick in general. So let's go with Chardonnay, and, and I. And I did want to try this from, from that podcast. Hearing, hearing that, I was like, you know, maybe maybe I need to uh, try a little Kendall Jackson. So let's check it out now. First of all, gold in color. Very gold. And KJ is very well known for gold in color. All right, so on the nose, you get a bit of apple. There's a bit of butteriness to it, um, kind of not not a lot of buttered popcorn, but a little butteriness to it. I'm not sure doing the one nostril at a time thing is helping any. I saw someone else was talking about that, and I've seen other people do it. And I feel like I'm getting kind of some tropical fruit fl- um, aromas out of it. Almost cantaloupe like. Let's check it out. So, first of all, it's it's it it feels like there's there's good smell uh, not apple but pear maybe that's why I was smelling more than apple very pear-y. Um, a, then then I'm getting a little of the buttered popcorn aspect this is when I first started drinking wine I drank a lot of KJ at restaurants because that was like that was a brand I knew and it was it was a style that that I was very into I guess and I think that's kind of typical um, and I think that's where once I started drinking other wines, I started finding other Chardonnays, or finding out there's there other ways to make Chardonnay, or, and of course, other ways to make Cabernet Sauvignon and all those. I started gravitating towards the quote unoaked Chardonnay um, but before it became trendy or super trendy, like it has the past couple of years. But I have to say, you know, just like, you know, if you want, just like when you talk about oak in red wines, you know, there's a place for it. Um, it's tasty. I'm still tasting it. It's got really good acid. Uh, I'd probably call it a medium plus in the, on the acid scale. I'm still tasting, not feel, I'm not tasting, I'm feeling the acid. Um, that, the, and the buttered popcorn isn't like over the top, okay? Um, it, it's definitely not an over the top feeling. How I remember the, the Kendall Jackson Vintners, Vintners Reserve at the, on the restaurant wine list was a lot of buttered popcorn. And we're talking at this point probably seven almost eight years ago, maybe even nine years ago, really. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Must be the bubbles. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, other shows would have edited, but I'm not. Anyway, um, are there any other shows? No, there really aren't. At least nothing like me. Um, but, uh, you know, I've got some good apple, some good pear. A little bit of that butteriness, but it's it's just it was just a hint. It was just there for a little bit, but not long. Good acid, okay. Maybe even a little bit of floral out of it. And 
I'm definitely a wine that's going to pair well with food. Again, food and wine, wine and food, food and wine, wine and food. These things go together. Yes, you can have wine and just drink it on its own. I do that frequently. But um, you really want to see what you're going to have with your food. And, and this is a delicious wine. Um, it's, it's, it's a wine that I would totally recommend. I like it. I like it in the sense I, rec- I, would, re- I would also recommend it. It's obviously not my preferred style of, of Chardonnay, but it doesn't mean I don't like it. Okay? You know, we all have preferences with our wines. And, um, you know, I, I, I enjoy the fact that it's not uh, what I remember as far as Kendall Jackson, because I really haven't had much Kendall Jackson in a, in a while, because I kind of went away from California cat, uh, uh, Chardonnays in general. Um, it's tasty. I, I, I can see buying it again. So, uh, I would totally recommend it. And I think this is something where, again, what you're going to pair with it. Okay, so you could pair lots of stuff with this. First of all, let's talk about fishes. I, we know we don't like, Mark doesn't like the fishies. But if you're going to pair a fish with it um, and you're going to get, because um, I'm also getting a bit of citrus. Maybe because I'm starting to think about that. I'm starting to get a little bit of that lemon aspect to it. Um, but you, you've got that fish. So, you know, citrus and fish go really well, especially with, depending on what type of sauce you're going to put with it. Um, if you're going to have uh, a, like a white meat type of dish, so chicken or pork, um, this go really well with that. Um, an Alfredo pasta, okay, an Alfredo sauce for pasta. Um, you know, I had I remember going someplace and getting a chicken parm, but instead of instead of spaghetti with red sauce, it was fettuccine with Alfredo sauce. So you'd have the parmesan with which had the marinara on it. And then, you know, breaded chicken and all that. And then you'd have the Alfredo underneath. It was a great, to me, a great combination of flavors. And you could totally put this with that. And and that's what I think is funny how I'm thinking about food pairings. What would I pair with this? I mean, I I brought that dish from getting my Chicago days, which now, I mean, Chicago is starting to become a long time ago for me. I mean, I I moved here in 2008. It's 2013. So it's starting to become like an old, old life, an old life there. So, um, but I can remember having Chardonnays or having white wines with that dish. And this reminds me of that. I might have even had Kendall Jackson with it. It probably did. And remember, it was a great pairing. Again, you could also do this with your salads. Let's say if you wanted to save the sparkling wine for later, you want it to be more of an end of the meal thing, you could start with this. You could start this with like a fruit tray, like fruit, you know, a fruit, um, like a fruit salad type of thing if you want to do a salad. Um, also with cheeses. So, I mean, I think it'd be really, really a good way to go. Very tasty. Recommend it. Buy it if you can find it. I think you can find it. It's pretty much everywhere. That's, again, why I I chose it. Um, So, yeah. So, let's move on to wine number three. All right, so now on to wine number three. Now, this is a wine that I've wanted to try uh, for quite a while. And I guess at first I thought it was an Australian wine because the wines I was seeing were the Australian versions. So we're going to talk about Layer Cake. Now, um, this is the 2011 Cabernet Sauvignon, California. Um, Now, this wine... Um, they have a website and all that is cool, but the about doesn't seem to have a whole lot of information on it. And it feels like things are really dark or getting dark on that, on that LCD. Um, maybe I should sit back here anyway. Um, so, uh, let me read the back because really th- this isn't even on the website that I saw. Let me read the back label real quick. Yeah. These lights, you know what? I read that these lights are about to go out <clears throat> so um, layer cake now they make a quite a few different uh, they make quite a few different uh, um, wines 
and they source their grapes from all over the world. So, come on, there we go. I'm buying new batteries, by the way, so I can't have this happen. All right, so they buy they buy wines from all over the world. I think it's from four different countries that they buy the wines from or the grapes. There we go. Now we got some light. Yay! Okay, so um. Uh, yeah, I was going to read the back label real quick. So it says, My grandfather made and enjoyed wine for 80 years. Uh, he told me that the soil in which wines lived were a layer cake, hence the name layer cake. Um, he said, He said the wine, if properly made, was like a great layer cake fruit, mocha, and chocolate, hints of spice, and rich, always rich. Uh, never pass up a layer cake. He would say, I always have loved, I have always loved those words. Okay, so. A. Orlando, tribute to Jason Woodbridge's grandfather. All right, so all I have to say is the website really has, unless I want to read their blog, all their entries, really has next to nothing really about them, okay? Um, I mean, there's a trade, there's a trade uh, thing, um, and it's just fact sheets, point of sale material. You know, just, it's stuff for the trade, which is fine, but... Um, so let's read what they have to say on the website. The layer cake wines are about affordable luxury. We sell to make wines that over deliver. We fly around the world selecting vineyard sites and hand making wines to be sure they were true to the grape. A variety in the region, but never lose that style. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, are made on four continents in five countries. I knew there was a five in there somewhere. And um, so they, they've got wines from all over. So they, they've got wines from Australia, Argentina. Uh, Spain, Italy, and California, okay? Um, and I thought somewhere they said something about wanting to have, maybe it's on the trade. Yeah. So their their <clears throat> idea is to try to make great tasting wines that are under $20, but but drink like more expensive wines. They talk about $50 wines, but they're less than 20 All right? So um, I, I want to try them out, really, because I've seen them all over the place. Um, and again, we went with Cabernet Sauvignon because... Cab is, you know, well, first of all, when you think California, you think two grapes, Chardonnay and Cabernet Sauvignon. Since I was kind of making this a California show, I kind of really had an internal debate what I was going to do for red wine. Do I go with Cab? Do I go with something a little bit lighter uh, than Cab? So maybe like a Merlot, something that's going to have a little bit wider spectrum. Uh, do I go with Pinot? Because then you can even get into the fish uh, in, in foul side of things with, with the Pinot. If that's, if you're going to have sparkling and a red wine, because you prefer red wine. Um, do I go with, uh, so th 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 those are really the things. And I also thought about a Syrah, um, just because I've had some Syrahs recently. Um, but I decided really Cabernet Sauvignon, that's what California is known for. This was kind of a California show. I do that. Um, when I was at the store, I started looking at the cabs, um, and I was like, layer cake, I haven't had it. I've been kind of avoiding it, because I didn't really know what to expect out of it. But I thought, why not? Let's check it out. So um, let's see. The, the grapes come from um, Sonoma County's Alexander Valley and uh, Paso Roble. So they, they take grapes from those two areas and they put them in here. It's 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. And uh, they use 100% French oak that has been air dried for 36 months, 30% new. So... Let's talk about that real quick. So they, it has a California appellation, but they get the grapes from two different areas of California, and neither one is enough to put that appellation on there. And if I remember right, I think it's for county, um, California, to use a county appellation, it has to be 100% grapes from that county. Um, but as far as eight, regular AVA, I think it has to be at least 75%, which means that they maybe do 50-50, maybe it's 74 26 who knows let's check it out so color good color it, it almost it, it kind of i don't know it looks a little cloudy i can see my hand through it therefore i'm able to drink it that's a reference to kevin's Rayleigh. i don't think we talked about it in the video but i tweeted that he said if you can see your hand through it the wine is ready to drink um 2011 so you know it's only a year old barely over a year old so um Let's check and see if it says how long it was aged in oak. No, it doesn't say. Oh, 
like the nose so far, really dark fruit in there, okay? Like cedar box, um, cigar box, really more like that. Nose is a little stuffed up too, so I apologize. I'm hear a lot of sniffing going on besides the wine. It's a rich nose, very, very layer, you know, layered, I guess. Um, and it's a bit, I don't want to use the word chemical because that, that that's going to turn people off um, and maybe think that I'm finding a flaw or a fault in the wine because it's not flawed or fault. I mean, the, the nose is sound. Okay. But like a hard candy. And I haven't used that phrase in a while, but kind of like that 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 hard candy smell to it. And not that it's a bad thing, it's just that I get I get a little bit of that. Let's do this. Ooh, I think I got one in my hand. Nope. Let's do it again so I actually get my nose in there right, right as soon as I lift the hand instead of looking at my hand. Yeah, still dark fruits. A little bit of candy type of stuff. Let's check it out. First impressions. Still getting that dark fruit. It's very, very fruit forward. Um, it's a fruit bomb, if you will. Um, there's a bit of vanilla creaminess to it. Um, acidity, really good acid. I mean, I would put this probably in a medium plus, um, medium plus in the acidity. So high acid, which is also good for food, um, which also means you can do it really good with other high acid types of stuff like red sauce, okay? Um, alcohol is 13 and a half. Doesn't feel like it's that hot. Uh, actually, probably that's about right, I mean, as far as it feels. So um, tannins really aren't huge, you know, you're... you're I'm, I always expect really, really heavy tannic wines from, from, especially from California Cabernets, but I have to remind myself that not every Cali Cab has lots of tannins because I've, this is not the only wine I've had where I was surprised it didn't have a lot of tannins to it in California, which is good because I was, my concern with, again, going with Cab was it was going to be too big, too heavy of a wine to go with lighter foods. With that said, this is still a, a full-bodied wine. So um, this is, you're, you're definitely having your your steaks, your, your especially well marbled steaks. You're having, you know, pasta with rich meaty red sauce. You're having um, pizza. You could, you could have pizza with this. I hope you're not having pizza for Valentine's Day dinner. Um, you could totally have this with, you know, uh, um, uh, pot roast, okay? You know, just, just all, the, oh, it should be great with pot roast. Um, if you're doing like a barbecue type of thing, if you were doing some brisket, if you were doing some ribs or whatever, totally. I mean, this is a wine you can really pair with that. And I mean, granted, of course, it has a nice chocolate layer cake on the front, but you could even extend this into dessert if you're having something chocolatey, having something like that um, that's a heavier type of dessert rather than a lighter type of dessert, which we'll go back to the sparkling wine with that. Um, It's got a good finish. It's a decent length on the finish. Um, 
It's definitely a fruit bomb. No earthiness really at all. I can I can I really don't get any earthiness out of it. If I had to find a negative, is that it feels, it tastes a little bit processed. Okay. Um, again, the candy part of it, kind of like candied fruit rather than pure fruit. Okay. Um, and it's not a huge negative. Again, this is now comes down to personal preferences. Would this be a cab that I would necessarily get a lot? Probably not. But in the right situation, again, food, I think with food, this wine definitely improves. Um, and it's not a bad wine by any means. And again, I'm not scoring wine. I, would I, I recommend the wine. Oh, I forgot to tell you how much I paid. Um, but uh, $15.99 at Central Market. Um, so I think it's a good value. Um, <clears throat> and again, also all three wines are meant to be under $20, meant to be a value type of thing. Um, I can guarantee you at restaurants, these three wines would be four times, about four times what retail is, maybe 3.75 times, okay? Just because of how, how it would be. So, you know, we're talking 60 bucks. No, we're talking, yeah, we're talking 75, $70, $80 for this bottle of sparkling. We're talking, what, almost 60? So about 50 bucks for a little over $50 for um, this Kendall Jackson and... Um, yeah, you're, you're talking 50, 60 for this, okay? So let's, let's put it in the restaurant terms. You know, you're, you're spending about four times. Um, you know, I totally, totally recommend it. It's not necessarily my style of cab. There's nothing wrong with the cab. But I totally can see putting this in some... You know, it's a nice steak. I don't know why pot roast. Pot roast just seems to be the one thing that I, I think would be outstanding with this. Um, and, and pasta with, with a good meat, with a good bolognese sauce. I totally. I think I would, I would I think I'd be digging on the wine if I was having that. So uh, bottom line, I think all three wines are recommends. You should buy them um, if this is what you're looking for. And uh, I, really, I really enjoy all three of the wines. Um, my favorite, though, yeah, sparkling. I mean, come on. I mean, it, it's kind of like one of those things where it's almost no contest. You're putting up sparkling wine against still wine. Sorry, no, 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 oh, snap comment this time. You're putting a sparkling wine up to a still wine. It's kind of hard for the still wines to, to win out, but... <laughs> The bubbles got up in my nose this time. Um, all three are great. Uh, sparkling wine again to finish off the meal. So maybe you, you hold on to it. Maybe you, you get one of those nice vacuum in type of stoppers or just champagne stoppers so you can kind of keep the little bit of bubbles in there, put it back in the fridge, keep it on ice maybe. And then you return to it uh, for dessert. Maybe you're having a, a light dessert like a creme brulee or a bread pudding or pastries. Pastries, cream filled pastries, maybe like oh, eclairs. Oh, talk about <laughs> you know, or having the layer cake with the chocolate covered eclairs. Yeah. So, anyway, um, dessert, I would go back to the sparkling wine, but any of the desserts that go well, I mean, like it's like the lighter desserts, you could totally do the Chardonnay, the ch anything chocolatey or rich, put it with the, um, put it with the layer cake. All three recommends. Uh, again, I just want to thank all of you for joining me. Uh, this has been a fun ride already and we're only two months into 2013, uh, barely two months into 2013 and I'm already seeing some good stuff happening. So um, stay tuned for some great things happening in the future. Um, I've, I'm trying to partner with some people, do some other, do some other on-site stuff and um, just stuff, just look, read, read the blog post. That basically tells you what I'm trying to do this year. Read the blog post, maybe I'll link it in the bottom. Thank you again. We'll see everyone again next time. Oh, hold on. Links above to friend me up. Links below for all these. And leave some comments. Salute.